Welcome to another Tech Tip Tuesday, where today we're going to show how to use alternate position views with part files. Alternate position views are reserved for assembly documents, but as you can see in this case, I've taken a sheet metal component and showed its folded and unfolded state together in one view. Now, this does require a bit of a workaround, so we're going to show a few tips on how you can do this. Let's go ahead and close this drawing and take a look at our part. We have a sheet metal part, and like most sheet metal parts, you can uh, flatten this and refold it with the flatten button. One of the things you may notice is that SolidWorks actually, when you create a flattened view on a drawing, it creates a derived configuration. Now this configuration is used to display this in the flattened state, and all that's happening here is a series of features are being suppressed and unsuppressed in the feature manager tree. So we know that we can show this in two different states, but how do I document this in a drawing? Well, as I mentioned, alternate position views are currently only available for assembly drawings. So what, that's what we're going to do is create an intermediate file. We're going to insert this part into an assembly. I'm going to go ahead and save this and just overwrite this default name here. And you'll notice that all this assembly contains is just this part. If I go over to my configuration manager, you'll notice there's one configuration. What we're going to do is we're going to add an additional configuration. I'm just going to right click and call this flattened. And in this configuration, I'm going to change the configuration of this part by simply selecting on it, choosing that configure that derived configuration we just mentioned from the pull down menu and right clicking. So now what we have is we have an assembly that contains two configurations, just like the part file does. The reason we're doing this is because alternate position views actually utilize configurations. If you've created them on the fly, you might not have noticed this, but if you do them the manual way, you're probably already familiar with this method. So now that we have the two configurations done, let's go ahead and insert this assembly into a drawing. I'm going to go ahead and just choose a sheet size and I'm going to drag my front view out onto my drawing. We'll place a top view and then an isometric view to show something else a little bit later. So here we have our sheet metal component in its formed state. You'll notice now, because I'm working with an assembly as compared to a part, alternate position view is available. When you select this button, SolidWorks presents you with the opportunity to either create a new configuration or use an existing one. In this case, we're going to choose that configuration we just created called flattened. When we do this, SolidWorks creates an overlay of the flattened configuration over the form view of the part. Now what's really useful about alternate position views is your ability to dimension from one position to the other. For example, capturing this angle. Likewise, we can use this to capture other pieces of information, such as the flattened length of this flange right here. So in this case, we can capture a specific manufacturing process. This might also be useful for things such as pockets or machining an O-ring groove or something like that that you want to call out specifically. So we could create these dimensions on the other side, but for the sake of time, I want to take a look at something else. If you remember that original drawing, we showed the isometric view also utilizing an alternate position view. Again, we do this by selecting the view, choosing alternate position view, and then again, we'll choose the existing configuration. And like before, SolidWorks creates an overlay or a phantom line version of the flattened configuration. Now here's where things get really interesting. You can select the view and change the display st type from, for example, hidden lines removed to shaded with edges. When you do this, SolidWorks conveniently leaves the alternate position view in its phantom line state. But if you, for instance, want that also to be shaded, you can do this by expanding the node for the view in the Feature Manager tree, and you'll notice there's a node for the alternate position view itself. You can then select this node and change the display style of that portion of the view as well. This is useful to give you a variety of combinations to get exactly what you're looking for. In my case, I want to keep it the way it was where we have the flattened version in phantom line and the form view in shaded. This really differentiates the two different operations that need to take place on this part. 
So there you have it, a way to get around the limitation of only being able to create alternate position views for assemblies. You can do this by creating an intermediate file and you can actually create alternate position views of individual components.